Please like and subscribe. So, welcome back, our kid. And well, this is part three of my Max Spears investigation. I hope you've enjoyed parts one and two so far. Um, this angle is going to be the BBC coverage and how they covered his life and his death um, and everything they said leading up to his death. So we're going to jump straight into this one. Um, there's not a lot I've got to say at the start. I mean, I should have said enough in parts one and two already. Let me know what you make of that. I'd love to know any feedback you've got on this case or whether you'd like me to continue investigating this case or any future cases you might want me to investigate. It's all good. I'm all interested, okay? So I'm going to share the screen we are right now. Okay. Going to get to part one from the good old Beeb, the British Broadcasting Company. And here we go. I hear this uh, sound frequency coming from the television that completely um, messes with my pineal gland. What happens is it releases the um, coiled serpent or the kundalini, which is at the base of the spine. Max Spears was a conspiracy theorist. He died in July 2016 on... Okay. Straight away, I've got to say, coincidence theorists are more of a threat than any conspiracy theorist has ever been. Um, conspiracy theorists use the term loosely, really. If it is just theories, then yeah, it's probably a conspiracy put together by more than one person. Um, you know, but facts are facts, and Max certainly came with a lot of those, in my opinion. He came with a lot of those. And what he was saying about the Kundalini rising right at the start is amazing. If you remember the foundations of my channels, that's what my first couple of videos were all about. They were about raising the vibration. They were about semen retention. They were about eating healthily. They were about becoming a better person, potentially the best version of yourself that you could possibly be. And I'm pretty sure that's what Max was working at, being an ascended master, basically. So here we go. He died in July 2016 on a Poland in Sofa. Now, how many young men do you hear of that happening to with, without a reasonable explanation? I've had one comment already saying it was more than likely poison, which makes more sense because of the black vomit, but let's see. A sofa in Poland, 1,000 miles from his home in Canterbury. He was 39. Seven months on and how he died remains a mystery. You don't just lie on a sofa and die. Something happens. Nie mogliśmy między innymi przeprowadzić kluczowych tego typu przypadkach sekcji zwłok. Stories keep growing amongst conspiracy theorists about the role of satanic cults or aliens, and that Max knew more than he should have. When I met him in in Canterbury, we were being tracked by at least four pairs of agents. Whispers about a death involving black vomit and strange rituals have catapulted this previously little-known conspiracy theorist into the spotlight. I have been under psychic attack, under astral attack, and under physical attack um, to stop me from coming to Warsaw to be able to convey this information to you. Wish they'd stop saying conspiracy theorists, by the way, man. I take high offence to that. Anyone who's using that term is a coincidence theorist, and I don't believe in coincidences, just like you don't believe in conspiracies. So here's my middle finger, and it's stuck right up. He was a very special person indeed from the time he was born. Just special because he's my son, never mind all the rest. Yeah. Yeah. March of 2008, um, some strange things started happening, happening to me. Um, I had some extremely vivid dreams and then I got uh, taken out of my body and shown that uh, my life as I thought it was, was not what I th quite thought they were. Part of the world that he was part of, he saw a lot of good and a lot of light. He believed we were in an era of enlightenment. <clears throat> and that it was almost like a renaissance happening here. There were those who would not wish for this to be so, that the last thing that they wanted was 
enlightenment and they wanted to keep people closed and in place and that is what he saw as the darker side. He thought that possibly the more he spoke out, the more dangerous it became. He said, if I don't survive this, Mum, then you have to make sure that you look into it. I don't even know if it was the people or if it was going to Poland. I, I don't know the answers, but something changed. Some great questions there. Is it to do with the people he surrounded himself with? Is it to do with the fact that he went to Poland, which I've been asked by one of my followers this morning? She said, why go to Warsaw? Now, I've been led to believe that um, he had friends over in Poland and he'd been staying with them, specifically a lady named Monica. And every time Monica, um, well, someone wants to question Monica, she's nowhere to be found, which is highly suspect. And I think even the BBC cover this person. So... That's another person I'm suspicious about. So there's quite a few so far. Somehow he got connected with the darker side. I love this 90s. Oh, it's gorgeous. 90s isn't it? curtains. I know. Gorgeous. <laughs> It's not normal for an apparently healthy 39-year-old man to just die on the sofa. Loads has been written about Max's death, but very little truth has come out. So what do we know? 1. Maxwell Lindsay Herbert Bates Spears died on the evening of the 16th of July 2016 in a suburb of Warsaw. 2. Max died in the home of Monica Duval, a sci-fi publisher they'd known each other for about three months and just a few days before, they'd returned from a holiday in Cyprus. There you go. So Monica Duval, that's whose house he was found in. Three, the doctor who attended the scene reported that Max had a high fever for about 24 hours and wrote, before emergency services came to the site, dark brown liquid spilled out of the patient. Monica answered. She was hysterical and she said, that, yeah, yeah, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead, he's dead. And then speaking to Monica two days after he had died, she said he had thrown up black liquid earlier in the morning. And she said two litres of black liquid. Four. Max's body came back to the UK six days later. Five. A post-mortem in Kent came back as inconclusive. Oh my God, interdimensional alien <laughs> spacecraft is coming after me. Or it's just on a mission doing its normal day's work. These are living. They are living. Well, they're, yeah, yeah, they're trees. Yeah, yeah, they're trees. Yeah. But they're thorn bushes. I had an experience where they switched me into a different domain. This is Miles. He calls himself a transhumanization researcher. He knew Max for many years and invited Max to speak at conferences. Max talked about super soldiers, he talked about deep underground bases, he talked about Nightmare Hall, where they've been making all these types of creatures in the labs, in Dulce and in this country. The creation of a interdimensional... Now, this sounds kind of like what 17 talks about today, right? The 17th letter of the alphabet, it's 16 plus 1. They're talking about an interdimensional war, an army, and children have been used to pull on the heartstrings of humanity. or astral war or army. The majority of the moon is now run by the uh, fourth right. He was also explaining that we have got, we are governed by others, the unseen. Is this what you would call the New World Order? The New World Order is a sort of a modern version of that. What did Max think happened to him when he was a child? Max was, was uh, part of a group of children, about 40 children, who were treated in very special ways. OK, here Mars is talking about the super soldier programme that Max thought he was part of. Max believed that his mind had been altered as a foetus and could be controlled to fight in other dimensions. But they were being trained to survive an enemy that they needed to be able to conquer, and that's what he was fighting. That's quite a big thing to believe that happened to you when you were a child. You see, you keep on saying this belief system. If you're actually in a programme and you're actually with other children, exposed to different military conditions by other elements who are in control, um, then that's not a belief system. That's happened to you in your life. I was targeted as, as an individual from birth. With me, the trauma began whilst in the womb 
there are a number of different ways to traumatize to uh, split the mind of the child so that it creates alters like a, maybe like a honeycomb the reason behind fracturing the mind is so that when the mind is fractured through trauma the mind fractures itself and creates an amnesiac barrier around that so uh, so that you don't have to keep reliving the experience over and over again we've got a predator and that predator has arrived and it's been farming us and it's been planning us our demise as parasites for a long time and that crucially is what Max was trying to tell us. So Max had some fairly weird ideas but I find it hard to believe they're the reason behind his death. There's a man in Poland however who might be able to give us some answers. We've learned that the prosecutor's office here have opened an investigation to Max's death and the prosecutor's just managed to make time for us and we're heading there to try and find out what he knows to see if he can tell us any more about Max. Obviously it's very early in the investigation, but what do you know, what are the facts for you at this stage? Na tym etapie ustaliliśmy, że załoga pogotowia ratunkowego została wezwana przez partnerkę pana Maxa Spearsa. You said partner of Max Spears. Z naszych informacji wstępnych wynika, że była to partnerka pana Spearsa. Natomiast te okoliczności będziemy, tą relację będziemy, charakter tej relacji będziemy ustalać w toku śledztwa. Lekarz po przybyciu na miejsce podjął czynności reanimacyjne, zakończone niestety niepowodzeniem. Wobec takich wniosków lekarza w dalsze czynności na miejscu nie była angażowana policja. Informacja o śmierci pana Spirsa do prokuratury do, dotarła dopiero 30 sierpnia tego roku, kiedy już ciało zostało przewiezione do Wielkiej Brytanii. Nie mogliśmy między innymi przeprowadzić kluczowych w tego typu przypadkach sekcji zwłok. The prosecutor told me he plans to interview everyone that was present when Max died. We know Monica was there, but it's unclear who else was around, and he won't give me names. Okay, dziękuję, Łukasz. Why? Why won't he give names of the people who were there? So I'm not accusing Monica of doing anything. I'm just saying she was at her gaff. This is the friend that he'd gone to stay with in Poland. Um, so why on earth aren't we allowed to know who else was around at the time? If he was indeed po um, poisoned, then maybe one of those people um, was involved. I don't know. Let's find out. So, more gaps in the story, and gaps and rumours fuel great headlines. Morning folks, how are we doing? Unanswered questions are like a red rag to a bull for conspiracy theorists. They stole Max's memories from his Max cell. was about to expose a child pedophilia ring. There are hours of this sort of stuff online. Everybody wants a piece. They stole his uh, memories and put him into Orlando Bloom. Max was messed with before he was born. I think Max is going to stick around for maybe six months out of body. His DNA was uh, genetically manipulated. Right. Okay, but we are still talking about a real person here. Bear in mind, we're watching the BBC, so they're going to go to every length and push, push the hardest that everyone who looks into any kind of alternative critical thinking is a conspiracy theorist and has no basis to anything that they say and that all of their claims are nonsense, which, as you should know by now, is stupid and it's a hate crime within itself. Um, now, you look at everything that's been coming true around you. You've been warned about the New World Order. You've been warned about vaccines being part of the programme. And look at what's happening this year. Look at what happened last year. You know, hopefully it'll all be resolved by next year. But there you go. We're about to jump straight into part two in around about a minute's time. Stick with us to find out more. Max was a father to two boys and he was a son to Vanessa and his life revolved around his family as well as his obsession with conspiracies. It was always the heart is what matters. Everything comes from the heart. 
that's the sad, sad part for me is that I think somehow he got connected with a darker side. Did you worry about his mental health at any point? Yeah. He suffered from anxiety, no question. I want to know what happened to Max Spears in his very last days. Make no mistake about it, Ma Max was no saint. And exactly how deep did his anxieties run? It created a really big problem, really big problem. And here we go with part two. There are a number of different ways to traumatize, to uh, split the mind of the child. Max Spears, a British conspiracy theorist, died on a sofa in Warsaw, Poland in July 2016. How he died is still a mystery. Max was obsessed by conspiracies. But was something darker going on in his life? Sometimes he would need someone to sit with him hold, and literally hold his hand um, and just be with him for, you know, a couple of hours. And he would not want to be left. He had a very little boy side to him. Now I'm sorry if that was my son, then I wouldn't rest until I had every single answer as to what had happened. His mum seems awfully complacent. I mean... All the respect to the Spears family, um, Bates Spears family, I should say, and also to his mother. But it just seems strange, man, especially considering all this trauma that he talks about that began in the womb. One night, a boy was sleeping and he saw light beaming through his window. Wait, they used to look for flying saucers out the window, my dad lived. He brought stairs over the ocean and he bought beautiful um, the big binoculars and they used to look together. He looked up and he caught a glance of a flying saucer. The mountain he got up and went to look what he saw. There was this programme called Monkey Magic when he was a little boy. He would imagine himself to be Tripitaka who had the Buddhist power and he saw himself as that. So he was showing interest in otherworldly stuff. The women coming out were people. But I noticed they had a sort of V-shape on the neck. I ran home to tell anyone. Next morning, I found out they were from this earth, that they had been bitten by some sort of creature. I remember seeing a lot of witches. I would be taken out of my bed. I'd sort of float up above my bed, through the roof of the, the house, up further and further, and I'd go through a set of black clouds. And when they were bitten, they were, they were brainwashed. So he just would make me laugh all the time. He would, um, we would play little games. There was a fatherly bit to him, wasn't there? Yeah, there was, was definitely a, a fatherly, absolutely a protector of me. He was, he was absolutely outstanding to me. Me and him were, me and him were, were incredibly close. I mainly think about him the most when I'm by myself. Actually, that's kind of the, one of the hardest things is when I'm alone. He was very, very charismatic. He wouldn't, he, he wouldn't, he wouldn't like hide his beliefs. He would um, try and put it out there. It's one, it's one of the main things I, I really loved about him. People were really fond of Max. He always seemed to leave an impression. Miles first met Max at a super soldier conference in Nevada and they became good friends. Well, I do interviews and rather than setting it all up and having tripods over the place, when I built this place, I um, decided to put this lighting grid on it. I can make it do different colors. Do you ever have a disco in here? Oh yeah. Yeah? Let's think of some horrible ailment that you might have. Backache, yeah? Yeah, backache. It won't take a second. Is it so? Forewarned is forearmed, Miles. What's going to happen? Well, what will happen is you will feel a sensation. Program running. Soft start. It's actually quite expensive. Whoa! Though. Whoa! That, ow! 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 That one's stronger. Oh my god! That's really strong. I can like see my skin yeah. moving. Yeah. Is it helping you back? 
um, no, I can't feel what's, any change in my back. What's actually happening is that your hair is progressively turning into a curly redhead. <laughs> Perfect. I've, ow, I've always wanted to be a curly redhead. I'm going to put these down. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Max's friends who shared his beliefs definitely read more than others into Max's thoughts and behaviours, particularly when he lost control. Max, on one level, is an extremely intelligent, erudite, fun guy, in love, loves the, loves the birds, great guy. Make no mistake about it, Ma Max was no saint. He, he, did, he did some recreational drugs, he drank like hell, and, and he had a good time. Now, when I met... Is that a problem? I'd say saints were uh, capable of having a drink and taking recreational psychedelic drugs. I mean, wasn't the cannabis found on an extremely old um, stone in Israel? I'm pretty sure I read that at one point. And, and this Jesus, Jesus slash his real name, Yeshua, uh, would have been healing with stuff like cannabis anyway. So I'm not just cannabis, man. I'm pretty sure mushrooms were growing back then and all sorts of different naturally occurring psychedelics like dimethyltryptamine, et cetera. But it is what it is. I'm not the judge. Apparently, other people are, but that's not true either. There's only one judge and there's only one God, and he's naming God. That's Gadriel, or Government Ordinance Department, or Gold, Oil and Drugs, G-O-D, or G-A-D. I'm not acknowledging him as that. I acknowledge him as Jehovah. I acknowledge them as the Elohim um, slash Yahweh. At him in, in Canterbury we were being tracked by at least four pairs of agents. But there was one particular guy who was uh, making a big show of walking around the place. And he actually did a thing called Trigger Max. It was one of the things, that, this is the whole point about these children, is that you can program a person's personality. What, so they behave in different ways according to what you yes, want Yes, and with to a do. trigger word, which, which is what's called, called a trigger word, Bingo, they will switch. Miles is suggesting here that Max, if I've got this right, could be switched on and off into different states by unknown people. He even goes on to suggest... One of the signatures of programming is addictive behaviours. Mm. What's Max's relationship been with drugs? So he did something, jumped over something perfectly, wasn't drunk, nothing jumped over something, managed to land awkwardly and got a crack in his pelvis, went to hospital in America and they gave him one of those powerful drugs. Oxycontin? Either Oxycontin or it might have been Percocet. And it created a really big problem. Really big problem. Oxycontin and Percocet are very common prescription opiates used in the States. And over-prescribing of this kind of drug has caused a big rise in heroin. If you don't know about Oxys and Percs, look it up. Big Pharma, Pharmacia, they are the wizards, the witches, the witchcraft. They know what they're doing. They are the best scientists and they are getting you addicted to drugs. Meanwhile, you're all pointing fingers at little kids selling 10 bags on the street of cannabis, which is a plant which occurs naturally. When addicts in America. Did he experiment? He went all the way down to the to, to using heroin. To heroin, yeah. well, Only once he couldn't get the pills anymore. There were a couple of times that he had relapses. When he came here, he was as clean as a whistle. Absolutely nothing wrong with him at all. But that leads us to the point of when he went to Poland and perhaps he was out of his depth, did he or didn't he relapse? I don't know. Max had sought help for his addiction in the past, but the way that Miles talks about it, that his addiction was actually controlled by extraterrestrial forces, is pretty extreme. It's called trauma-induced mind control. You put the individual into a state of trauma, so their normal personality basically... For fuck's sake, I might as well just fuck it off. Oh, it off.